Hey guys, how's it going? It's Isong TV here, and this is going to be the first video of my affordable tech series. If you haven't yet, please like and subscribe if you enjoy my videos. In this video, I'm going to review the $7 headphone amp DIY kit that can be found on AliExpress. If you're trying to find an amplifier for your headphones but don't want to drop $100 for one, this video is for you. So these are what you see when you open the box, and starting from the right, there is an acrylic housing, the electrolytic and ceramic capacitors, the LED, the potentiometer, and two headphone jacks. Finally, there is a circuit board along with all the resistors neatly organized. These also include a detailed manual that includes the schematic diagram. One thing to be aware of is that the 470 microfarad and 220 microfarad capacitors have the same dimensions, so make sure to read the label on the sides of the capacitor. I started off by soldering all the capacitors, and just in case you don't know, the ceramic capacitors and resistors can be soldered either way, but you have to make sure that the LED and the electrolyte capacitors are soldered in the correct direction. For both these units, the longer leg is a positive side, and the shorter one is a negative. This is the soldering gun that I purchased from AliExpress, but as you can see in the clip, it didn't really work out for me. After burning myself multiple times to get it work, I just switched to the traditional method of soldering by taking the mounted solder out of the gun. This is how the board looked like after soldering all the capacitors. In the next few clips, you'll be able to see my progress in building this amplifier. Putting the acrylic panels together was the easiest part of the build. After this, it was time for testing. For the testing, I got my modded iPod video and my Sennheiser HT599 open back headphones. Although my headphones used a dynamic driver and had an impedance of only 50 ohms, the headphone amp clearly improved the sound quality and lowered distortion of the music even at high volumes. If you happen to buy economic planar in-ear monitors such as the 10 Audio P1, I believe this would be a perfect combination. So is this worth it? In my opinion, it is well worth it for only 7 US dollars. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me or leave a comment. My next video will be about restoring an iPod Classic, so if you are interested in that content as well, please feel free to subscribe so you can avoid missing the upload. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.